Hi, my name is Sean Shaler, and this is my friend Chris Ford, aka The Objective Geek, and he can be found on Twitter at, uh, I already forget, it's The Objective underscore Geek, <laughs> is that it? I gotta no, get this at Objective underscore Geek. Objective underscore Geek. I gotta get out of the way right away, right away, or I'll never remember it by the end. By the, by the end, it's past my bedtime, ready to go take a nap, and it just, everything's out of my head. So yeah, that's Chris Ford, he's The Objective Geek. Uh, I'm Sean Shaler, and I'm not really active on Twitter, but you can visit my website, seanshaler.com. Yeah, and have your own website. I have my own website that's mostly a a static page with a picture of my face on it that I don't <laughs> really use as much as I should, but I'm still proud to have a website. And we're here yeah. with another episode of Avatar, The Last Podcasters. We are in episode 14, so book one water, episode 14. It's called The Fortune Teller. But before we kick into that, first of all, Chris, how are you doing today? Doing great. Excellent. I've been in, I've been so enthralled into Avatar Universe lately. It's uh, just me and my daughter have been watching a lot. We have finished watching Korra, and uh, she has some strong opinions on stuff. I really love it. Like, <laughs> like she's like, oh, you're such a chip off the whole block. I just. <laughs> Just love you so much. She's already For voicing her reasons. opinions on cartoon but... shows. I think that's tremendous. I don't know if I had opinions yeah, at her age. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure I did, no, I but didn't. if I couldn't, like not not on cartoons, it's I just, probably couldn't like, I didn't vocalize have strong them. opinions when I backed them up. <laughs> Even yeah, if I had like, opinions, so she likes Cora more than after I lost Airbender. I did ask her. Interesting. Um, <laughs> And her favorite season of Korra is probably the least favorite season of a lot of people, which is a uh, book two spirits. Oh, ooh, yeah. Uh, but I get, get why she loves that. Cause that, that season is all about like big overarching evil thing versus the greatest good in, in humanity. Like it's high level. It's really easy to um, digest. Maybe it's a little um, more concrete loves... or a little less abstract yeah. in the sense of her grasping it. Oh, that's cool though. Yeah. Good for her. That's excellent, yeah. the fact like, that we, she we recognizes that. Like, after we got done with Korra, she was like, I want to watch Korra again. I want to watch book two. And she says book two. Like, <laughs> she... <laughs> She's not into seasons. She talks about it yeah, in yeah. books. Yes, yes. Um, she's like, I just want to watch um, the first Avatar, and then Darkness Falls, which is the episode title. <laughs> I do not uh, know episode titles. Other... I might better after we finish all of this podcast. I might, uh, but yeah. I do not know episode titles whatsoever. But uh, it's funny yeah, to I think I know all of... the episode titles to Avatar. Thinking of me at her age, I was almost completely, completely Looney Tunes. Like I had a thing for just the, uh, I guess the the wider environment of Looney Tunes, not, not specifically a character or anything. But even in, at that point, it'd be like, hey, I want to see the Looney Tunes where they find the Abominable Snowman in the Himalayas. <laughs> Not like the name of the episode or why I liked it or anything. I just wanted to see the Abominable Snowman. <laughs> it's just impressive to see a small yeah. child. Uh, is she six? Yes. She's six years yeah. old? Yeah. It's impressive to see a small child grasp that concept. Yeah. Um, also impressive that you were already pretty immersed in the Avatar universe. Uh, but if you're anything like me, we do this podcast that like what five people watch every week. Now I'll give us some credit, like 10 to 20 ish <laughs> people watch, yeah. uh, give or take. And yet, uh, so it really doesn't mean much in that sense, but just doing the podcast and having the conversation, it kind of builds up my, my motivation or my ambition or just general excitement about <laughs> the show. Like I could just go watch it anytime, but it's like, nah, we're doing this and it gets me all amped up. So, uh, it gets me re-excited. And on that note, I actually have a couple more pieces of news and nonsense. Uh, well, hey, first, actually, any uh, have you published any videos in the last two weeks on movie reviews? I think uh, you've done I several, I actually. Oh, I, have a, I have a Creed 2 review. And uh, to sum it up, it is uh, this great directing, some great acting, some okay action scenes. It is the most predictable movie I have seen since um, the fake Avatar movie with the blue people. Um, it, <laughs> the it Sigourney is Weaver Avatar movie, than, right? Yeah. It's more pre predictable than that. Um, and so I knock it down a few pegs for its predictability. But it's a, it's a good movie. I, I, don't, I have no problem knocking down pegs for predictability, but it is not always a bad thing. Not always bad. 
Um, excellent. And then is that the only one you've done? I think last time we talked about the Mark Wahlberg movie. So. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, next, uh, I am going to... Oh, and to... I did not... I did oh, see... Uh, I didn't make a review of it, but I did see Fantastic Beast. Oh, we yeah, have, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that was... It's my least favorite Harry Potter movie, definitely. Of the... I think you probably like it a lot more than I do. I might like it relatively more than you do, but not maybe relative to the rest of the series. Like, of the of the 10 mm-hmm. movies that have been produced, it might be number 10 for me. I still liked it, but... Uh, in terms of where you have it placed or ordered, I don't really have a qualm with that at all. No, it just yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's definitely number ten for me too. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would have to think pretty hard because seems... I really hated Deathly Hallows Part One. I was so bored, but I understand why it's necessary. But nine or ten, like I get, I get what you're saying there. Yeah, it just it just seemed pretty redundant from the first movie. It was like, oh, we got to find credence, or we got to find this thing, and then. Yeah, so it's just like a redo of of, of the first one almost. Nothing but then, like, really oh, the happened. last I did I did really like the last thirty minutes of the movie. Um, it was just way more grander, and we finally started pushing the story forward, which did not really happen for the first three fourths of the movie. I can um, I just can also like, agree with that. Yeah, it was just it just seemed like a lot of useless story going on like and newt's commander just seems very useless like come on we don't care about you newt we just want to get to dumbledore and grindelwald and that stuff like we don't <laughs> like i don't know where he comes in <laughs> it's not that he couldn't have played a very important role but yeah we've we've talked a little bit about it. it's kind of weird that it feels like they've just from the title and the way that he's used in the movies feels like they're building up this whole series around him, but that's not what we care about yeah. or what we want whatsoever. Like we would have been just fine with like a crimes of Grindelwald series or whatever. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Just, just crime or just Grindelwald, like seven movies, or just Grindelwald or whatever. Should, I don't. So they should have leaned in hard on the Dumbledore. Yeah. That's what we really want to see. I think, um, not that Newt's commander is a bad character, but like it feels like the whole series no, is he's... built around him, but it's not. Or at least it should yeah, be. He's not a bad character, really, at all. He's a very interesting guy. And the actor, I forget his name, Redmayne? Uh, Eddie Redmayne. Redmayne. Yes. He's kind of strange, but I don't mind him at all. So, yeah, I, I mm-hmm. agree completely. Like I said, I probably like it more than you in the grand scheme of things, but I totally have no issues with where you're putting it in the list and why. Um, but regardless, Fantastic Beasts, if you're a Harry Potter fan, you're going to watch it anyway, and that's totally cool. And all right, so I keep talking about it. At some point, I am going to attempt to get our audio <laughs> only on iTunes and Google nice. Play. I don't know if it's going to happen, but I'm going to give it a concentrated effort. And I've been remotivated because I saw an article about some other guys almost exactly like us. Uh, not an article, like their <laughs> blog post. It's a podcast I listen to. It's like their blog post about the same thing. Like, hey, nobody's listening to us. And so we put it on iTunes, Google Play, and still nobody listens to us, but we feel good about it. And I was like, that's, yeah, that's kind of what I want. Um, so I, maybe over the holidays here, I assume that maybe our video schedule might might not be super consistent for the next month. Uh, but maybe during that time, I'll do some investigation. And then uh, finally, Chris, Christmas wish list. Uh, anything Avatar related on your wish list this year? Um, no, I, I have all the avatar stuff I need. Um, kind of want some more statues. There's a nice Wonder Woman statue that's $50. I already have a nice, like, Wonder Woman collection going on right now, and so I might not want to disturb that balance. And <laughs> like, these are legit, they have like team like... chemistry on your shelf. Yeah, you don't wanna, yeah because right now you don't want to like bring in. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reference yeah. Carmelo Anthony once every single week. You don't want to bring in like a Carmelo Anthony on your shelf. Ruin the chemistry exactly. up there. It's about the same height as the tallest Wonder Woman there. And so it's just going to throw things off. And then this side, there'll be nothing there. Uh, you but... know, Chris, I got to be honest. I would not mind another tall Wonder Woman on that left side. Kind of in, in the gap between the well, two comics on the middle and the left. I would be okay with that. I think that's good. Yeah, but then, but then the other, but then that that section isn't like a section for just Wonder Woman. It's a section <laughs> for like other DC heroes. So then it's going to throw off the balance. Things I love the statue and it's very affordable. <laughs> Nerd. 
it's only fifty dollars <laughs> and it's like a nine inch statue. All right, that's pretty cool. Uh, that's I feel like that's um, typically in the, I feel like that's typically in the eighty ninety dollar range at nine inches, right? That's pretty. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, for we're talking like polyurethane plastic in that case, right? Yes. Yeah. Um. Wow. Yeah, PVC. Uh, that is a that's a great Christmas wish list item. I'm not gonna get it for you, but that's a great item. Good thinking. <laughs> the only thing, uh, the only reason I brought this up is for two reasons. One is that I got, uh, I did get the Cora, uh, the DVDs for my birthday because they were all of like fifteen dollars or something like that, ludicrously cheap. And I still have my PS2 under my television, so a lot of times I still watch DVDs on my PlayStation <laughs> Two because I'm permanently stuck in the year two thousand and two. Uh, but then also, this will be mostly irrelevant to anybody else that hears this, but you'll think it's funny. I finally bought a brand new cell phone, a brand new smartphone, and I bought it. And I thought, of all people that would be proud of me, because he's seen all the bad phones I've had, it would be you. Um, I is still, it a... It is not is an expensive nice phone. phone. I don't even know. I don't even want to tell you what it is. Okay. It, is it is a good phone. I would recommend it to anybody who wanted a, a very high quality phone for a very low cost, but I don't even want to say what it is. Cause then you'll look it up and you'll know how much I didn't spend on my phone. Uh, but anyway, I had the same phone when I left Payless. Um, so what's that? Like almost two years, not well, a year and two thirds. And I bought that phone used on eBay for 50 bucks. <laughs> and then finally, Heather's like, what do you want for your birthday? And then later that day, I dropped my phone and broke it. So I had to get a new phone for my birthday. <laughs> so interesting birthday. But anyways, I did get the Legend of Korra series. And at some point, one of these weekends, when there's no good football in, in between now and bowl season, I'm just going to like just burn through all the Avatar and all the cores just so I have a whole, a whole oh, what's frame of reference. I'm, 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 I'm starting to be in a camp that Korra is just as good of a show as as avatar i mean I'm, I'm not completely there yet but it's um am i rewatching i'm getting closer there although i'm going to rewatch avatar again and probably be like nope avatar is better so i i will reserve judgment until because i've only seen Korra the whole way through one time i've seen avatar the whole way through two and a half times and so i am biased i will go out on a limb and say i think in Korra the highest highs are going to be better and bigger and more exciting but the lowest lows are going to be uh, you know, more boring, like the, the seasons of Korra See, that I, I don't, don't like, I think I'm going to, they're going to be like my least favorite seasons of the whole shindig. I think episode wise, I think Avatar actually has more lower lows than Korra. But uh, uh, I'm, I'm thinking more in terms of, of, of let's call them seasons, like of, individual books. Uh, um, I yeah. think the the ones that, the two in particular that I don't like from Korra, and I won't talk about them now, I think those will still end up being my least favorite, but that doesn't mean that I may not move more towards that side of liking Korra more overall because I, the yeah. seasons that I do like are so big and grand and powerful that, yeah, um, I'll reserve judgment for now, but I'm going to burn through it all one of these weekends here. So I'm a big college football fan, and this weekend, is it this weekend or next week? One weekend we have all these makeup games for the Hurricane that uh, cancel a lot of the games the first week. It might be like this weekend where they have to make up a lot of those games. Um, and that'd be a bad weekend to watch football. But that might be next weekend too. I don't know because it, be it might be a conference championship weekend. I don't really remember. My team's terrible, so I don't have to pay too much attention at this point. Uh, anyway, hey, great. I don't pay attention to college anything. I love college football, but that's all right. Um, that's a, a, Chris, good segue there on bad Avatar episodes because I don't really like this one all that much. Um, oh, I shouldn't say that yet. Chris, any cleanup from last week? <laughs> Dang it, I thought it was a great uh, segue. I thought it was a great segue. <laughs> uh, last time's video, I think I did have some trouble getting some of the background noise out of it, but nothing too crazy, nothing I can really do about it. Um, I think we got it cleaned up this week. I think you sound better already, so that's good. Go in the right direction. Um, and then, I, I forgot, I, I jumped way ahead. I thought I, I thought you had a great segue and I left way way too far ahead. Synopsis. We just uh, we just did the Blue Spirit, which was somewhere in the Earth Kingdom. There's a Fire Nation compound. And so Aang... Agreed on the term stronghold. Stronghold. Oh, that's a way better term anyway. Yeah, compound sounds... 
way worse. No, yeah. Stronghold sounds better. Mm-hmm. And then so Aang's trying to um, find these frozen frogs that are supposed to heal Sokka and, and Katara because they have a terrible feverish cold. And then he's captured and he's brought into this stronghold. And then this mysterious blue spirit rescues him from this stronghold. And it turns out to be, spoiler alert, turns out to be Suko. Um, that has so little to do with this episode. There's like no transition <laughs> to this episode whatsoever, which I mean, it's a cartoon. There doesn't have to be, but it's a totally different. You don't even need to know that. All you really need to know here is that we are still in the earth kingdom. We're kind of out in the wilderness wandering around. And then they stumble on a man being attacked by a platypus bear. And that is the intro to this episode. Um, sorry, I guess there's, they don't stumble onto the platypus bear immediately. First, we get this little cute scene with Aang being all smitten with Katara, and it's pretty adorable. Yeah, they're planting plan more of these seeds. Aang makes her not a betrothal necklace, but a replacement betrothal necklace because she lost hers like three or four episodes ago. It's been a few, uh, yeah. Earth Kingdom episode, yeah. or the uh, Earthbender episode where they're on the, the rig in the ocean. Yeah, yeah. So that's yeah, been a few episodes. Ago. The really? the great coal uh, coal is earth debate. That one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then um, uh, yeah. So Aang, Aang makes her a, another patrol the necklace, and then Aang almost gets friend zoned here. Almost. Like, he was a completely friend zoned. I think he almost. He definitely. If if she <laughs> said coach, her words were, Aang is like. A cute little guy. A little funny guy? No, she cute said guy. he's like a Momo cute little here. guy. Just like Momo. She compared him to their pet monkey. If that's not being friend okay, zone, I don't know what is. <laughs> it's it's close. I mean he would have been completely there if she was like, Oh, Aang is like my brother. All right, so that's way worse. She didn't say that. That's way worse. Yeah, yeah. that's fair. But Aang, if she had said like, Oh, Aang is like, you know, a silly little brother, like that would have been like, dang. No more airbenders at all. <laughs> Fine, I'll give you that, But she compared him to a monkey. That's that's where I'll leave right, my argument. Yeah. A pet monkey. That's not what. I... <laughs> a flying rat. <laughs> uh, but Ang did not mind. He did not like. I don't like. I don't remember if there's any facial expressions or anything. Yeah. It's not like we saw his face and he was like, "Oh man, I'm friend zone." I don't think it was supposed to be that way. I'll give you that much. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they come across a guy who's like fighting a platypus bear. Just casually, and they dodging. all come up with, yeah, just yeah, because he's not worried at all. No. And then no. afterwards, when the platypus bear goes away and the opposite goes away, he's like, "Oh, Aunt Wu told me that I will be safe." Um, and then pretty much she tells him about the fortune teller, and he gives him an umbrella, and then it rains. <laughs> and Sokka, this, I mean, I, I like this episode for for a lot of people. Um, for a lot of characters, but <laughs> it, it, it just supports that Sokka's like negativity and stuff will be the doom of him. <laughs> like, he's always pessimistic and, and narcissistic. You know, he's not narcissistic. That's not the word I'm looking for. Um, so it starts raining and an umbrella. He's like, oh, anyone can predict that. Guess what? I'm going to make a prediction now. It's going to keep drizzling. And then the rain just stops. I will. And then Aang just says... Not everyone has the gift. <laughs> I will say it's not that I. How do I? How do I word it? I don't care for the subject matter of the episode, and that affected that it affects my judgment. I don't think it's a bad episode necessarily, uh, but a lot of my negativity comes from I don't care. I tend to be a lot more <laughs> like Sokka in this. I connected <laughs> with Sokka in this episode. Um, I do have to step back just a second. And it's not important at all. It's just one of those things I think is hilarious. Uh, one of the comedy points that I thought did hit really well is at the beginning, they're giving him all this advice about how to get rid of the platypus bear. They're like, make lots of noise and then play dead and then crawl up a tree and wave at him and wave your arms. And like, they're all just <laughs> and shouting to him. And run in zigzags. <laughs> and it just sounded like a Bear Grylls episode. <laughs> And uh, so that one hit home. Yeah, with me. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> not it, not related to anything. It's just a, there's a lot of uh, there are a lot of humorous quips in this episode that I kind of hit or miss for me personally. But oh, this I did. Episode, I think I did I like that one. Hilarious. Ah, well, uh, that's fine. That's fine. There are a lot of humorous quips. Yeah, how they how they hit everybody might be different. <laughs> 
but anyway, it's it is a funny episode. I will give it that. And so, uh, yeah, he tells uh, so, them about Aunt Wu, and then they yeah. they end up going into town to meet this Aunt Wu, and they get to her shop and meet this little girl named Meng. Yeah, and so she clearly is infatuated with Aang immediately because Aunt Wu told her that yeah immediately. Um, the, I found I found Meng really funny also <laughs> in her and Aang's interactions or lack thereof. Um, like her first interaction with him was like. What's your name, Aang? Oh, that rhymes with Aang. And you do have big ears, don't you? And then Sokka's like, and Aang is like, uh, yeah, I guess. And then Sokka's like, don't hurt. be modest. Your ears are huge. I wonder if in a certain culture that having large ears is very offensive. Because this is like, uh, there's a couple episodes back where they made fun of Sokka's ears. And like, elephants get together yeah. and make fun of how big your ears are. Like, somewhere out there, there's a culture that's yeah. like, well, that's too low. That's too low. <laughs> I don't know what culture that is, but surely somebody takes serious offense to ear jokes. Yeah, so uh, so they they all meet Aunt Wu. Um, Katara goes and has her fortune told by Aunt Wu. And uh, so she tells them that she will marry a powerful bender. That's the biggest thing out of the fortune. And, uh, and Aang overhears it because Aang... Oh, wait. He creeps well, also, on him, yeah. The comedy, yeah, he creeps on her, but to get away, he tells Saga he has to go to the bathroom. So he he hears uh, Katara's fortune that she'll bury a powerful bender. So that makes Aang feel good because Aang knows that he's a powerful bender. I mean, he's the avatar. So he comes back looking all like walking in stride and happy. And, he, and Saga's like, <laughs> What did Saga say? He said, like, I can't remember the quote, but. Oh, must have been a good trip to the bathroom or something like that. Yeah, on and that Aang's way. Like, yeah. And in there, and what happened in there is like, I don't want to know. <laughs> I just like a lot of the comedy in this episode. Uh, I think it's maybe uh, not overarching. I think a lot of the comedy maybe isn't quite as clever as some of the other comedy throughout the series, but there is a lot of it in the episode, and it's it's a very lighthearted episode, which is good because we've had some pretty serious ones here recently. Good yeah. balance. Good balance. And maybe they purposely, because the thing is, you could have planned this episode anywhere. Uh, and maybe they're like, dang, after the really, spirit, yeah, it's totally disconnected. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, we should we should <clears throat> maybe bring down the uh the the dourness. It we've had a few episodes but, in a row here that are uh not that they end totally negative or the positive endings, but just very yeah, kind yeah. of deep, pensive uh, the more yeah, deep, darker Yeah, darker themes. So yeah, it's a good break it from that. Yeah, and then uh, between Aang and Katara's <laughs> fortune, she, uh, Sokka's like, whatever, let's get this over with. And then, and then before he keep walking in, she's like, you will die miserably or alone. You will live miserably throughout the rest of your days uh, or bring yourself a bunch <laughs> yeah. of misery. Uh, most of it self-inflicted. Yeah. Inflicted. <laughs> <laughs> he's like he, yes. how did you tell that you didn't even read my palms <laughs> it's written all over your face yes. yeah. the thing is like Aunt, and, and the thing about Aunt Wu's predictions is that they are fairly correct um, like if we watch Legend of Korra spoiler alert we don't know what happens to Sokka Sokka doesn't have any, we know Sokka doesn't have any kids so we, we might have didn't even get married so maybe he just died alone <laughs> <laughs> I never thought about it. You just kind of ruined Sokka's the rest of his life for me. I feel so bad for him. I mean, he does a lot of great stuff. He becomes chief. I think that's about the extent of what we know about him, right? Yeah, he ha- he does have a statue in in um in Republic City, and he's holding a boomerang. <laughs> he's holding his boomerang in the statue. Uh, her prediction, Aunt oh, Wu's predictions. In, in that weird sense, do sort of turn out to be right. But like, this is this yeah. is a subject matter that's kind of like a soapbox issue to me because I worry about how people in real life... I mean, this is like an exaggeration, but the same kind of approach to real life with some people, I guess. Uh, oh, no, this I, was... Uh, I think it was very reflective. <laughs> it, I don't want to say very it reflective. Does, but... It does kind of hit that, and it takes things to the extreme... Um, but like, I feel this whole, this whole episode, there's been a lot of recent episodes where I feel for Sokka 
But this one, more than anything, just the whole episode is like, oh, my Lord, somebody listen to this guy. Like, not always, but yeah. right this instant, somebody listen to him. Because I just don't I don't care for, the, like, the destiny, fortune-telling, conversation, any of that stuff whatsoever. Um, or the people's reactions to it in the episode is very frustrating to me. So, But on the bright side, I, like I said, I bonded with Sokka, so that was a good thing. <laughs> Yeah, so she uh she tells Aang's fortune, which I love this part. <laughs> She's like, all right, you know, we'll we'll put some bones in a fire, and I'll read the, the fire will make cracks in the bones, and I read them. And she's looking at it. She's like, oh my word, this never happened before. Like the bone starts like brilling like, up and almost explodes. explodes, and explodes like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. She's like, this this is incredible. You will be locked in a, a tremendous fight. The forces of evil versus the forces of good, they will decide the fate of the world. And like she's building all of this up in terms of Aang's like, Yeah, yeah, I know that already. But what about love? <laughs> <laughs> and like just the fact that Aang finds us all he's just very nonchalant about that stuff. He's like, you know, that stuff is gonna happen. I know that I have to face the Fire Lord one day and I'm the Avatar, so it just comes with the territory, but this is the first time, uh, or not the first time, this is where I felt bad for Aunt Wu because most of the predictions she makes, kind of general <laughs> fortune cookie-esque, yeah. right? Uh, this one, yeah. she had a real vision of something <laughs> real and important and powerful. It caught her. It surprised her. She had a powerful vision. <laughs> she didn't know the Aang is Avatar, and it surprised her, and she had to be feeling maybe not good because it was a horrifying vision or whatever, but she had to have like some pride in there, and then Aang just whips it away. Like, no, no, let's get back to the fortune cookie stuff. Yeah. And so then I felt exactly. really bad for Aunt Wu. She was right. That was the prediction she had that was good and right and accurate. No. And this, I just felt bad for her. Sorry, Aunt Wu. I appreciated that though. <laughs> that that professor, hey Harry Potter connection, that Trelawney moment where she actually has a real vision and she goes off on the creepy oh. spiel in the um, yeah. is it the third book or the fourth book? I don't remember. I think it's. The, I didn't read the books, but I think well, uh, in the movie that I don't even know if they do it. Where she kind of, I think I they do it. Where the she weird like lady with the glasses, out. yeah, and she like blanks out for a second and gives a scary yeah. prediction. That might be like the third or fourth. I can't remember, but uh, anyway, that's what it reminded me of. Like, I need she to go had to a real Potter binge. She had a real thing. It's about time. Uh, it's always about time. <laughs> um, but I just like she had a real powerful moment, and they just swept it under the rug. But whatever. Um, yeah. I'm here for you, Aunt Wu. <laughs> Not the rest of the episode, but right there. And so, uh, yeah. So then, uh, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. So then she does a cloud reading for um for the village, just saying like, all right, there's a good year for twins, <laughs> good year for crops, and the volcano. Um, that they used to send a person up there to look to see if the volcano's going to explode, but since Aunt Wu's around, she can just tell the fortune. And, but she words this prediction very specifically. She says, the volcano will not harm the the town. Very bureaucratic wording of it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But hey, at least she got it right, I guess. Yeah, she got it right. <laughs> um, right quote, unquote, but yeah, I mean, right. yeah. Uh, and then so Aang decides, uh, oh yeah, so in this time frame, <laughs> Ming is sort of stalking because she has it's not that she has a crush on, she does have a crush on him pretty, but it's more like serious. an infatuation of like i'm gonna marry you type of type of deal <laughs> in a way that like children every kid probably went through that one point so yeah it's relatable yeah and and at the same time ang is crushing on on katara and then there's like this big ang goes to Sokka to ask for help <laughs> or ask for advice about girls, which so one thing Sokka has no no idea, <laughs> no real Who experience this? with girls anyway. Um, but uh, the only girl Sokka has ever and... had any type of success with is a girl that lived is a warrior chick that lived on an island mostly full of other women. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> limited choices. That's um, all I'm saying. Ang asks her what to do about Katara, but Sokka thinks he's talking about Mang. Um, and he's like, yeah, you know, I think she likes you too. And the socks like, Aang is like, really? And you're fine with it? Yeah, I think it's great. <laughs> and then it's funny because they never go back to that. And then 
Saka tells him, like, you know, what you do is, you know, what guys like you make a mistake of is that you play it, you know, you're too needy. Like, you got to play it real cool. Like, you, you don't no, care you either way. Says, he says, you're too nice. Yeah. <laughs> he's, just, like, straightforward with it. Yeah. He's like, you got to act like you don't care about her at all. And then right at that point, Mang comes by. <laughs> and Mang says, hi, Aang. And Aang's just like, whatever. And walks away. <laughs> <laughs> and because he really doesn't care about her and Sokka's like man that kid is good <laughs> that was probably my favorite moment of the whole of the whole episode yeah. is, man that kid is good <laughs> and so uh, and then and one of my other favorite moments is uh <laughs> they're looking oh while they're doing the cloud readings man like hey he's talking to Aang like Aang doesn't that cloud look like um a flower or something like that maybe a, a rare panda lily and then he's like, uh, I guess so. And then he just shoves her to the side. <laughs> it's like, Katara, doesn't that... And he just says the same thing. Katara, doesn't that cloud look like a panda lily? And, like, I just love And I the, think their even she says something like, yeah, kind of, or something like, like, she doesn't really care that much either. She doesn't care, yeah. yeah. Well, he tried. Uh, but that was enough <laughs> encouragement for Aang to uh, go try to find <laughs> this rare panda lily. Which happens to be up at the top of a volcano. Yeah. Uh, so Aang tries to go get the, the panda lily to give to uh, <laughs> to Katara. The thing is, when they're climbing up the hill, Sokka's like, uh, flower's okay, but maybe when you're married. <laughs> you're like, Sokka has no idea. <laughs> and, and Aang's like, no, I can feel it in my heart. And then he yeah. like cites an Aunt Wu prediction, and then like whatever she told him to make him feel better, and it just makes Sokka really mad. Yeah. Again. <laughs> uh, so it goes up to the volcano, and he finds out that the volcano is uh is going to erupt again. Again, yeah. And... Oh, not again. Just it's going to erupt. But... Oh yeah, that's true. It hasn't erupted. The village is still there. So, yeah. and then they go back down, and <laughs> one of I think the funnier scenes in the in the episode personally just i think i know what you're talking about go but ahead. no you go ahead just the just I, I just mean the whole the whole village as a group and then the are you at least what i'm thinking of is the science like like you can predict it with your science or how yes. it raises it <laughs> yes yeah he's yes, like I can. <laughs> yeah uh, i forget what they're exactly talking about I, yeah, I forget um, how they word it. Like, uh, oh, you just can't take her her word trying... for it, and they're like, "Oh yeah," and you can explain it with your science. He's like, he's like "Can you explain the weather with your science?" Yes, yes, yes we can. <laughs> and then it's almost like, like... <laughs> well, I, and then the other part there is that they're like, "We went and saw the volcano with our own eyes." <laughs> <laughs> the, the original platypus bear guy is like. I heard Aunt Wu's prediction with my <laughs> own ears. Yeah, it is. Honestly, I, I'm, I'm getting a little political here, but it's almost just like people just believing whatever they hear on 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 news without looking at actual facts. It resembled a, a political debate on Twitter, like a very yeah. safe debate behind two people whose Twitter handles were also highly offensive names of some type. <laughs> Like it's a yeah. debate between those two people. It was beautiful. It's beautiful, <laughs> or hilarious. Not beautiful. Excuse me. Hilarious <laughs> is a way better word. Uh, so yeah, so they decide to uh, take a match with their own hand and change uh, change their cloud readings, and uh, they had to go get the book, which has all the uh, this this how to decipher all of them. And uh, yeah, and they literally are. Up in the clouds, I went out of my way to capture this screenshot. <laughs> There's so many Harry Potter references here. Doesn't that look like the uh, like the Death Eater symbol up in the sky? Yeah. It's kind of creepy. That's a favorite favorite visual yeah. from the episode for sure. Um, but they literally maybe they got it from this. Maybe um, which came. I don't think they did. I don't know which came first. Well, the book would have have the Harry Potter book would have came first. And the Harry, but the book the... does describe a skull. With like the snake coming in the mouth or something, but you can't visualize it. But you know, uh, the, the great great piece of visual imagery here. Although it was contradictory to earlier, they mentioned like, "Hey, that one looks like a fluffy bunny," 
and one of the guys like, oh, you better hope not. That signals, you know, famine <laughs> and terror or whatever. Uh, but this is a skull, and so part of me is like, that should be backwards per the other stuff. But whatever, whatever. Mild fortune telling. Yeah. Do you ever know? I mean, Harry, Harry Potter. Speaking of Harry Potter, Harry Potter sort of inspires Avatar. Like before they were pitching, um, Brian and Mike went to go talk to like some head of Nickelodeon, and they asked him like, "Well, what do you guys kind of want?" And, he, and and they were like, uh, "Something like maybe magic." I mean, because Harry Potter was out then. Yeah, that's what we're into. And yeah. then so, yeah, so Brian and Mike had in their head of like legends and lore. Like they they kept on thinking about that. And, you know, they developed their own magic system, really, within, within the show. It was the perfect time to bring magic to the animated small screen, because that was, uh, I mean, that was the rage, absolutely. So I can see that. Good connection. This episode is full of them. <laughs> um, so they put the cloud, they literally make the cloud in the sky from the book after they stole it, and they have to convince Aunt Wu to come out and do a second reading, which I still don't really know how or why they do it, but they do, somehow, manage to get her come back out. Yeah, she does second reading, which says, like, the village is now going to be, the volcano's now going to erupt. It was very specific um, again. I don't remember she, the wording, she, she but says, it was, again, it was very yeah, specific. Yeah. The volcano <laughs> is going to, to go off or something, but not destroy the village. She didn't yeah, say she, that part. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then so they gather everyone to, ready, like, all right, we need all benders to do this. I love this one small scene oh, of, like, yeah, it's pretty good. The, the twin's like, I'm a bender. And the twin is like, I'm not. It's like... <laughs> Well, wh why did you even raise your hand? <laughs> There's no point to it other than that it was funny. G and genetics. So. It's funny. You could, Those twins you could are probably gonna... honestly do do a lot of theorizing just based off that one little snippet. That... <laughs> like bending is not something genetically. I mean, there's genetics involved, of course, in bending because you know, you got to have a waterbender lineage to have to become a waterbender, but it's also all about spirituality and stuff like that. Like, just because you guys have the same as that DNA doesn't mean that one person be a bender and the other one person uh, would also be a bender. It sounds like you just accuse the non bender twin of not being spiritual enough. <laughs> He's uh, something, <laughs> something going something's up. up. That kid grows up to be like Amon's biggest supporter, <laughs> the, the non bending Ooh, twin. That's. Yeah, we hey we that, made up uh, yeah, we made up our own avatar lore. We can we can tack in some more <laughs> fan uh, some more fan fiction here. That's a good spot for it. Uh, but yeah, she does come out. And she it's a very specific prediction. It doesn't say the village will be destroyed or anything like that. It's like I think it's just hey the volcano is gonna erupt. Like oh crap, they're right. <laughs> uh, but then they they all come together and they protect it. Sokka directs everybody very effectively. Um, yeah, Sokka's very effective with that. Uh, and then a uh, volcano erupts before they all get out. And uh, in Aang, which I love this moment, because it's one thing, it just showed just what a BA Aang can be. Like, just with the breath of airbending, he stops the whole volcano um, from <laughs> from uh, taking over the village, which forever, that village would look freaking awesome with just this huge freaking rock lava wall like, structure. Yeah. yeah, lava wall. Like a fork. That would be kind of awesome. It's a, it's kind of a cyclone type breath maneuver too. I don't know. It does look, it looks very good. This, this whole episode is not very uh, exciting audio visually until the very end. But those last five minutes are. There's lots of interesting stuff going on in the last quarter of the episode. <laughs> and then, uh, so they do protect the village. There's still. I don't, I don't know if denial is the right word, but there's still. <laughs> Despite this traumatic experience, they're like, "Well, but Aunt Wu predicted I, the village wouldn't be destroyed." I mean, and it was really their faith is their faith is more reaffirmed now. Yes, it has become <laughs> like... more accurate. <laughs> and, uh, at least, hey, at least there is a good moral at the end. It's a very happy or a very strong moral at the end. Yeah, and, yeah, and the fortune teller tells them like, just as you change the clouds. You have the power to change your own destiny. Um, yeah, so that's interesting. I, it's not a moral for me because I don't believe in destiny or whatever, but it's a good way to end that episode. It's a good uh, good message yeah. to send to Aang in that respect. And then... Oh, and then and what away. we did notice is that... Um, well, then Katara, when Aang oh, does yeah. that huge move, I I um, oh, Sokka just offhand says, Wow, I forget what a powerful bender that kid is. Don't, don't look, don't look, don't look. 
oh no where did it go hold on i'll pull it up whatever i just like that scene where she's looking up at him so i capture it there and she's just looking up like oh yeah yeah good moment touching and she's like yeah i guess he really is it's funny because i'm watching this episode with my daughter like just before we recorded and uh and then we're both like oh yeah well yeah she marries ang well spoiler and and they had three kids she's telling you what that <laughs> is a powerful bender yeah. yeah that's kind of adorable and then they're all walking away at the <laughs> it, very it end. is speaking of adorable and they're all walking away at the very end and I don't remember how it goes, but Mang wishes them all goodbye and wishes yeah, and Katara, Katara good luck or whatever. Like, and Katara like calls her like bye Mang. Like she has no idea what <laughs> what this girl has gone through. She has no idea what she put and this then, girl through. Yeah. And then Mang like gives like a fake bye and then just <sighs> floozy. It's, like it's funny to hear the was, word floozy like, said in a small child voice. So yeah, so one thing when she said floozy, my daughter was like, "Daddy, what's floozy?" I'm like, "I, I don't know. It's just a word. Like, it's not a nice word, but it's not. It's just it's like probably, I almost want to say like the truest meaning of floozy is probably not good for a small child. In the yeah, it's like a home wrecker, right? <laughs> like that's yeah, yeah, a home wrecker in a very like the intimate way, yeah. According, yeah. let's. I mean, we can or, look it up on Urban Dictionary or, real quick. <laughs> or a very um, promiscuous, maybe. I'm just gonna let's Woman? let's just Urban Dictionary. Why not? All right, floozy. Yeah. Well, let's see how my new phone works. I'm so excited. <laughs> oh, it started reading it to us, but then it stopped. A woman, a girl, or woman who has a reputation for promiscuity. <laughs> Oh, but Urban Dictionary. Sorry, Urban Dictionaries is different. That was the regular definition. Urban Dictionaries is more pertinent to this episode. Holy, Chris, you won't believe this. The definition of Urban Dictionary. I'm reading this verbatim. The insult that Meng from the TV show Avatar The Last Airbender mumbles under her breath as Katara walks away in the episode The Fortune Teller. That is definition nice. number one. That is the top definition. Number two, I am not going to read because it's too inappropriate. All right, it gets more inappropriate. That is the top definition on Urban Dictionary is this episode. That's fantastic. Yeah, so so weird that she called him a floozy. The, the like, I guess definitions I mean, were, more, were like not inappropriate words, but very graphic, so I don't care to read them. But anyway, it's not a word that a small child needs to hear. Anyways, uh, funny ending. Floozy. <laughs> funny ending matches the tone of the rest of the episode. Before we get into yeah. ratings, we I enjoyed last time showing off uh, one of your mini, uh, as you call it, your treasure trove of nerdy goods. Uh, one of your mini and your favorite one this week we decided we would take a look at. So just quick break before we go to ratings to show you this poster that you made. Much like your Avatar poster, although I believe this is your first one. Is that accurate? Yeah, this was my first crack at uh, Make My Own uh, like poster. And this one... Like, like, when I sent it to you, I told you this was my probably most prized possession. Like, <clears throat> I will legit never sell this. Like, someone could offer me $1,000, and I probably wouldn't sell it. I want to just, like, keep I'm going up. Because... I just want to keep going up a number and see at what point you're like, uh... oh, I got kids to feed. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, I'm not... I mean, I'm not rich or anything, but I'm not, like, strapped for cash. Right, so, so it's like, all right, we'll um, go on to the poster. That's fine. Yeah, and, the, and this poster means it it means a lot to me. Um, like, I was inspired to make this poster for two different reasons. One, I saw a poster of a bunch of black superheroes that someone, that a fan art made, um, and I really liked it, and I really wanted it. I kept looking for, for internet for it all the time, and I could never find it. Like, the person only sold, like, a, um, like an 8 by 17 of that poster that he had. And then also one time I went to uh, Hobby Lobby and they sell a lot of superhero stuff there. And there was this great um, metal kind of poster by Alice Ross, who's one of the greatest comic book artists ever. It's one of those like, steel, like those steel garage sign type deals. Yeah, yeah, something like that. But it was, it was fairly big. Yeah, something like that. Um, I don't have any Alice yeah. Ross art up here, but Alice Ross does really realistic pictures. Um, he's one of the greatest comic book artists of all time. 
but uh but on that picture i was gonna buy it there wasn't like a single person of color on it and i was like i can't buy this like I, I just don't see myself in it. So because of that, I was inspired to make my own poster. And, and, uh, and that's what I did. Essentially, I went and grabbed, <laughs> I did a lot of research on, on all of these people. Most of them already knew. Uh, I, I knew that I wanted to have at least, um, I, knew, I knew the main people who I wanted up front. So got Black Panther up front, who was like the greatest. He's like the fir- one of the first black superheroes um and then we have green lantern and black lining uh green lantern which is he's one of the first black superheroes in dc uh, missy knight luke cage vixen spawn and cyborg and then i wanted to make sure i had storm up top she's one of the most popular ones one of my favorite and static shock or just static is his name he's one of my favorite superheroes because he's the one i relate to the most of being like a a geekish black kid who has plenty of diverse friends. Um, he's smart, but he's not like, sometimes they make superheroes like too intelligent for their own good, I think. So that makes them less relatable, um, but he's still smart. Um, he knows a couple bad people. <laughs> like he, he's run with a couple of bad people. So he's the most relatable superhero. Um, but this took me like 30 hours to do. I use a lot of you know, photo paper. It probably cost me like 150 to do. Um, Mostly so, from photo yeah, like, paper. Print. Yeah. Got you. I um, think it, it's yeah, sort so, of eye-opening to me as a like I'm thinking back to my younger years, and the only ones that from like cartoons at that right kind of after school time when I was at that uh, like later upper upper grade school age, not quite high school, um, Static Shock the cartoon. And uh, maybe some form of Teen Titans like Cyborg and yeah. Static would have been the two probably most recognizable immediately to me as a not super in-depth comic book fan, but a cartoon after school fan. So it's kind of eye-opening to me just how many there are, quite frankly, how many very visible ones there are. Yeah. And some of them aren't. Of course, they're not as well known, especially at the third row. <laughs> <laughs> um, doesn't have as many people. <laughs> like I did purposely put... Uh, there's yeah, an the organization most, the most popular ones. yeah there definitely is an organization i appreciate that the black ranger <laughs> is stuck in the back row <laughs> you know what? I, I i i should have honestly he deserves a higher spot i just that wasn't a great picture of him um, I got you. actually that's fan art that somebody did i would say so um, even there i watched i mean a lot it, of it was a great rangers. picture it just wasn't um, I watched a lot of Power Rangers, and I mean, you see the character. I know he's black. I know he's a superhero-ish, but I don't put him in like a, 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 I don't know. I never really. Yeah, thing is, he was one. Of, he was one of the late additions. He was one of the late additions to the to the poster. To the poster. Just trying to think as a kid if I just even wouldn't have paid attention to that at all or what. But anyway, <laughs> it is a very fantastic poster, and you completed it probably. Let me guess, four years ago, if I'm remembering right. Give or take. Uh, no, it wasn't that long ago. Not that long ago? Yeah. No, it was like early 2018, I think. No, I was still at Payless. Yeah, because I, I, no, I, yeah, I just Payless. started getting into uh, just started getting into epoxy resin and stuff. I was still at Payless when he did this. I feel like I saw this in person did you? when I was mm, still at Payless. Yeah. So it would have been, in, are you sure? Like maybe early 17? I'm pretty positive. I have... No, nah, I have the the uh, dates on when I took this picture. No kidding, I could have sworn I'd been there, but whatever. Uh, yeah. Doesn't that has no effect whatsoever on the quality <laughs> of the artwork here? Um, excellent poster. Yeah. Uh, is in the upper left ish, or I guess it's more like center left, but he's in the back row. Is that an iteration of Firestorm? Yes, that is Firestorm. Okay, I went through. I had a small pile of Firestorm comics at one time. You might remember, and I read I do a remember. few of them. But it was very, very old Firestorm, um, <laughs> like very original, old iteration of Firestorm. Even him, I didn't realize that at some point he became uh, that he was a black character. Yeah, well, some of them, the the first one was white, and then the second one was black, and then after a while, they were both it, mm-hmm. like because Firestorm has like two people occupying one body um so i think they kind of would alternate well, who's the body or something i'm not 
Well, if I oh, remember, sure. if I remember the Wikipedia, like just Wikipedia and trying to learn more about what I had, at one point there is actually multiple firestorms, not just the two consciousness in the one head, but there actually is like two nuclear yeah, men. Yeah. At no, two. you're right. But that was well beyond anything that I had, so I hadn't touched on that at all. But anyway, um, excellent poster. I do believe that the picture of Storm is probably my favorite individual image there. This is an excellent picture. So oh, yeah. It's my, and that, that was, I had to cut all that out. That's, that was the worst thing to cut out. It sounds terrible, but this is well worth the effort. <laughs> nice work. Well worth I it. I was going to have, like, I was going to have more interaction with the characters. Mm-hmm. I was going to have, like, electricity emitting from static to storm, and then Wally West, um, the flash to the to the right, because he, electricity comes off the flashes, so I was going to have some electricity coming off of him going into static and then storm. So it goes from flash to static to storm down to black lightning. Um, but then the rest of it wouldn't have been that interactive. <clears throat> Not what re- would have required more artistic capability. Got you. I think, uh, well, your balance would have been all off there. All your static electricity it, and lightning. It would have been off. Upper right. there, it would, the balance would have been off because there would have been a lot of interaction on the right side. And like zero interaction <laughs> on the uh, on the left side. <laughs> um, yeah, anything else you would like to finish with other than that? I know we have seen the Avatar poster um, before as well. Plans for next poster? Yeah. Uh, I don't have any plans for any other posters. I'm running out of space. <laughs> you got to get rid of some of those store bought that... ones. Put up the put up the good yeah. ones. I'm not that inspired to do anything because I was really inspired to do this and I was really inspired to do the Avatar poster because I've always wanted a poster of Avatar and just there's one just doesn't exist. Not a good so, one. Yeah. I guess I like to create stuff that don't exist. Um, well, yeah, you can't force inspiration. But, all right, excellent yeah. poster. And with that, let's segue into episode ratings. And I started with, uh, I started with yours. Yeah, so <laughs> uh, I visual seven and a half. Um, there's a couple things I liked. It's funny you can kind of tell that they didn't spin as much. That I think the animation is good, especially with the fire and on Aunt Wu's face when they were given the fort- Aang's fortune. Um, I think you can tell they didn't spend as much money or or time on this one than they did the previous one because like when the wind blows on this episode, like you just see like a vague like line going over the grass. Um, but like in in um, in a blue spirit, when the wind blows, you see like all the blades of grass blowing. <laughs> they go out of their way to show you that. Yeah, it's kind of cool. yeah, yeah. I mean, but I thought the animation was fine. I mean, there wasn't no like fight scenes, but um, so seven and a half. Uh, and then when it comes to story, there's like like we said before, you can place this anywhere between episode three and episode four of season two or something like that and it would fit <laughs> anywhere just about you go anywhere in the earth kingdom it would be just fine <laughs> yeah which is good you need a couple of those episodes uh-uh. uh, but it does plant a little bit more the seed of katara and Aang being together but honestly i didn't need that planted like i knew that from the beginning and and it's, it's uh reinforced more in future episodes in such a much better way uh, then just like oh, oh your fortunes that you're marrying like that's kind of cliche and and uh i don't know just kind of shallow <laughs> yeah well i mean <laughs> in in the, I, I went through all these same things you did and i kept having to tell myself like oh, maybe kids just like a real like your daughter would she have picked up on guitar and ang in the same way without like one of this episode slapping you in the face a little bit i don't know maybe not i, th- I think by this point if you're if you're a kid you probably don't get that until maybe this episode so yeah it's good maybe it's a valid I, point i didn't let it factor into my score too much but it just no it didn't matter not. yeah oh well <laughs> what's done is done uh, it's on paper. Memorable... <laughs> i almost gave this a seven and a half i did send you a seven and a half on this but i just found this episode so hilarious like i'm just laughing out loud with my daughter watching this episode um and then of course i love the part where ang actually uh, saves the volcano. I think it was a great moment. I always look for that. That's one of those special moments, I think, in a show. Um, but there's a lot of special moments all throughout. But so gave that an eight. That totaled up to a very healthy seven point six. Yeah. 
No, uh, nothing wrong with that score. All right, before I get started, it's not that I think it's a bad episode. I just have to iterate. I just don't uh, reiterate. I just don't really care for the subject matter in this show. It's kind of a touchy soapbox thing for me, and uh, that impacted my ratings a little bit, and I'm sorry for that. But here they are, audio visual. <laughs> I mean that's not that bad. Six point five because I I maintain that through three I'm quarters fine. three quarters of the episode there's very little exciting music or or ambient ambient sound or anything. Uh, the last quarter of the episode it gets very good, but up to that point there's not much to look at or listen to or anything. So six point five. Eh, you're right. Uh, story there again kind of the same lines as you. You can stick it anywhere. There's kind of a nice beginning to end standalone story here, but even then, it's not the most exciting. It's very cut and dried. Hey, Aang sings a village of people that we'll never hear about again, and then it moves on. So, same things that you said. Uh, I think maybe if you're if you're a very young child, you need this, but at a certain point, even kids are probably like, "Duh, I know that's gonna happen." So it's just it's it's there. It's fine. And I bumped the story up, not that it factors into uh, into it all that much, but when I was thinking of the comedy the good pieces of the comedy that's what lifted it up higher for me like i might yeah. have had it lower uh, but since we don't have a comedy segment <laughs> i'll put that in story quality the <laughs> memorable is my most harsh one and i have a valid reason for this <laughs> uh, there's a very there's a very valid reason for this first of all uh, i knew that we had just done the blue spirit and i just watched the whole this <laughs> each each dvd has four episodes on it and when I watched the Blue Spirit for the last time we did it, I watched the whole disc. I could think of the other episodes on the disc, all three of them. I couldn't think of this one. Couldn't remember why it was important, anything. And then even when I, even when I put it in and I knew what episode it was, I was like, oh, yeah, I remember now. I watched this like a week ago. But when I put it in today, I was like, how did they stretch this into a full 20-minute episode or 22 minutes? Like, <laughs> I, I know what happens this episode, and I can tell you, like, five seconds yeah how did they turn it into a yeah, that's true and so there's uh while there is some good scenes there is some good individual pieces of comedy um i really i really did like the last quarter of the episode i can't say it enough it's very exciting very well done um i don't even know if it's five minutes it might be more like three minutes uh but overall it just I, I literally couldn't remember why it was important or what happened it just feels very stretched out so there again it's not horrible uh it's just not that good to me 6.4 that's probably a lower total than i would want to give it because that ends up pretty low on my list and i didn't really mean it to but it just i don't know it doesn't hey, do a lot it's for all... me. doesn't do a lot for me but anyway it still comes out to a seven which um that's probably a little below average for our episodes uh but not bad by any means yeah. nothing wrong with a good seven that's a passing grade uh, passed a lot of classes with 70s <laughs> And so, yeah, in conclusion, <laughs> in conclusion, when Sean thinks that you're stretching out stuff to fill time, he doesn't remember it. No. Uh, in conclusion, it does have a nice, I think it does come with kind of a nice moral at the end, at least within the scope of the TV show. I love that she tells him, hey, you can change your own destiny. You know that. I don't, I, I think it's funny that he doesn't consider it the other way. Like she gave him this spiel about following his heart for love. And then at the end, he's just thinking about being the Avatar. And she's like, you can change your destiny. And nobody stops to consider, like, well, maybe he doesn't have to fall in love with Katar. He could go fall in love with whoever he wanted. Um, I don't know. There's just... Oh, there's a random part. <laughs> there's another random funny part. Where in a... I mean, it's not that funny. I just like it. At the beginning of the episode, when Aang makes the jewelry for her, and uh, Saga says, well, when you're not, you know, if you weren't saving the world, you could probably open up a jewelry shop. And Aang is like, I don't see why I can't do both. <laughs> I don't know. The, the shoes part where the guy talking to Sokka is like, yeah, Aunt, Ru, Aunt Wu predicted when I met the love of my life, yeah. I'd be wearing these shoes. And he's like, and how many days, times have you worn them since? And he's like, every day. <laughs> every day. <laughs> well, of course you're going to be wearing those shoes. Yeah, and they're just, it's it's full of stuff like that. That's, I don't know, I said, they're this Maybe it's not that it developed Sokka's character a lot, but of all the episodes, I personally connected with Sokka the most in this one. I felt so bad for him when they when he's like and when he's defending science. I was just like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, buddy. There again, it's exaggerated, like it's blown out of the water. But we have to remember, there's still a certain amount of that battle kind of being fought in real life. But 
whatever, whatever. Um, <laughs> different, different perspectives, different topic. And I'm not, I don't like to get political or philosophical on the internet. So anyway, nothing wrong with this episode. It is funny. Uh, I never thought of like watching it with your daughter. She probably thought it was hilarious. Um, easy to see why lots of good. Oh yeah good comedy pieces here oh she'll be rather watching Cora. so well yeah of course of course what six-year-old girl wouldn't rather watch Cora than than avatar yeah. so oh, we had we had a great weekend of just full-on girl power i think we watched um we, we watched moana she likes that and i like that i mean maybe my wife likes that i think she just likes some music i don't think she's actually sat down and watched the movie but watch I'm, moana i'm iffy I'm and moana. we watched uh wonder woman movie although it was more so like me watching it and she watched parts of it um, i forget that that movie has more violence in it than i think it's a true yeah. i mean i would have been fine i watched i watched batman 89 you know <laughs> when i was five killing a guy with the back of his batman exactly like blowing up factories with people in it um batman but like, there's kill. a scene where like <laughs> there's a scene where like they shoot people with bone arrows my daughter's like they got arrows in them. Like, that's not nice. I'm like, they're fine. Um, Just bad bad. And then we watched, honey, they're um, going to be okay. Yeah. And we watched the new she show on Netflix, uh, which I like that. Actually, I wish we would have watched that today. Yeah. Uh, and then we also watched uh, Legend of Core. So that's, I'm glad that my daughter has yeah, that's good awesome. shows. The thing is, that we didn't like purposely set out to have like a girl power weekend. It was just what we were watching. It, I mean, and your interests were pretty well aligned there. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, it's funny you say that because the last movie that I watched was last night. I watched Up with my wife, and I always forget how like heart wrenching that movie is. <laughs> like it's Up, it's a Disney movie. It's happy, it's goofy, it's kind of silly. It's like, no, the first ten minutes of that movie, I I cried like three times. I think <laughs> it breaks my heart so many times over. What a powerful I movie. Think you know- I I've only seen that movie actually once. I I do not believe that anyone would argue that it is like an extremely high quality. Is it Pixar? I think it's Pixar, right? Yeah, double check. It's it Pixar, is Pixar, yeah. It is Pixar. I don't think anybody would ever come out and say, "Yeah, this is one of Pixar's best." But it might be one of Pixar's most emotional. It is a um, pretty emotionally. I think it's it, it. Sometimes I wouldn't say it's cheap emotion because. It's good. The first ten minutes is amazing, no doubt about it. But then, I think the quality just goes downhill from there. It like, does. They, they they start off too high. The 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 emotion that hits you at the beginning of the movie, there's nothing else that that really matches. Yeah. Or even yeah. maybe not even the emotion. Well, well, definitely the emotion. But even after that, just that first big chunk of I think time. Even the like, storytelling. I always. I think I think the first ten minutes is better than the movie as a whole. Yeah, I think so too. Even just, I always picture the scene where he is on the motorized staircase chair thing, right? So, Mm -hmm. like, uh, spoiler alert, his wife has died. It's not a spoiler, it happens in the first 10 minutes. (laughs) Um, So his wife is dead, and you see him get up out of bed, and they they do such a great job of expressing all this man's just the sort of pains and drag of day-to-day life for, for him in his position. And I just always picture that scene where he's going down the motorized chair stair step thing and there's just so much they fit so much into so little and then you're right after that it does it it tails off and becomes more of just a not a generic pixar but just an average pixar uh, story no it's a very generic pixar story it, like it is you have it's these very, two people who don't get along at first yeah and they gotta find some common ground and it's I mean, very that is goofy, toy story it's pixar that is approach, finding nemo yeah. That is, that's all, that's every Pixar. An yeah. unconventional <laughs> skin on a Pixar story. But it, like I said, it, yeah. I will say it is one of the most most emotional Pixar movies for sure. It gets me every time. Ah, I don't cry. Coco gets me every time. What's that? What'd you say? Coco gets me every time. Well, of course. that That's uh, yeah. that's emotional in like a dark, deeper theme way. Yeah. Like love, not that love is superficial or anything like that, but there's different, different <laughs> types of emotion. I don't I don't cry during movies, but as a child, not very often at least. I do sometimes. Not very often. Uh but as a child I remember I one of the first I don't movies. mind saying that I cry during movies. I just don't I don't watch a lot of emotional movies because it ain't my style. Uh so I don't do it very often. But I remember as a child I watched Angels in the Outfield and when Al <laughs> tells the kid that Mel Clark is gonna die, 
I shed a tear like this. I'm a small <laughs> child. I was probably six or seven. I was like, Mom, that guy just said that Mel Clark is going to die. <laughs> And my mom didn't quite get where I was coming from, like, as a kid trying to put your mind around somebody being told they're going to die. Like, that just, I don't know, that's a weird, scary prediction. But I don't know if mom got it right away, what I was getting at, because I remember her kind of passing it off, like, oh, well, he's not a real person, honey. <laughs> like, he's just a, that's not what I meant. Like, what? <laughs> they just, yeah. this angel just told Joseph Gordon-Levitt that one of his friends was going to die, and he's just like, oh, well, I just got to deal with that now. I just gotta have that info. What am I supposed to do with that information? <laughs> and so I shed a tear during. That's the first time I can remember crying during a movie. I probably did before that because I was a baby. I don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember the first time I cried during a movie. But I'm, I'm gonna assume mom and dad yeah. always say my very first movie mm-hmm. was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles two, like in a theater. It was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? 2. I know exactly. I would have been very, very young, I so I'm certain that I cried, but for different reasons. <laughs> uh, I was told that I saw Lion King in theater. I don't remember seeing it in theater, but the first movie I remember seeing in theater was Ace Ventura, Pet Detective 2. <laughs> Were you a little young to be in yeah. that movie at that time? Probably. <laughs> the thing is, Did you sneak so into that movie my, at my age dad, seven? No. <laughs> My dad, who doesn't like movies, like took me and my sister. I have four older sisters, and the other two were busy doing something with my mom. They had to go uh, go to the doctor or something. So my dad took me and my youngest sister, who's older than me, to the movies. And he went to go take us to see Ace Ventura, Pet Detective, and that's 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 the first memory. That's like one of my probably one of my most cherished memories. Even though I don't remember really how the movie, how I how I liked the movie. I just remember that being my first movie going experience. Well, I, I mean, I can't remember going to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cause I was zero years old. Uh, <laughs> trying to think of my first movie memory. Uh, we went to the movies every year with school. Like that was a school trip type thing is we would all go to the movies and pack in that small nice. theater. It's like you know, a Prince of Egypt or something like that. Um, I can't really remember, but great movie. Um, great yeah, animation, yeah. great uh, soundtrack underappreciated movie i think in hindsight uh, that, was, that was one of dreamworks first big movies i, I think it was even, their I could first not have big even movie. told you that was dreamworks i totally forgot it was them i thought it was uh i, I don't know i just kind of had a generic animation <laughs> company in my mind i guess generic animators and <laughs> yeah. yeah good time what well, did uh, just uh this this conclusion turned into the history <laughs> of is. us attending movies Very... Uh, that's tangential a, it was, it's very nostalgic and it, we're getting to a time of year where we're supposed to be nostalgic and grateful for things so it fits right in uh, in a tangential way i'm the anti-nostalgic critic one of these days if we become big enough which won't happen um <laughs> but <laughs> i was not with that attitude <laughs> just wait bad. till you get us on itunes <laughs> right, that's true <laughs> i want to have like a a review off with a nostalgic critic nostalgic critic versus the objective geek It'll just be, I don't know. The difference between the nostalgia critic and us is that guy has a team. That is true. He has, <laughs> he has a team. You have a phone, and I have a seven year old <laughs> desktop. <laughs> that guy has a team. <laughs> we can try real hard, though. I don't want to, I don't want to discourage yeah. us. We can and, aim for the stars. And that's like his job. That is right. That's what he does. You, you come home to children. <laughs> from another job i don't have an excuse but you do um, <laughs> i come home to the dog um but anyway yeah, yeah. that concludes the uh, that concludes the longest conclusion ever <laughs> but hey that's great love reliving yeah. those memories and sharing my tears of movies with other people thank you for tuning in next week i can't remember it'll be pretty crazy coming up on the holidays because lots of holiday parties and things like that uh, but we'll try to fit something in within the next two weeks at the very least, my goal is to try to squeeze in two more before Christmas. That's All right. my goal. Uh, whether or not that happens. The next episode, I think the next couple of episodes are some of my least favorite. They're not so, great. This is a, uh, this is Oh, not... wait, no, no, no. The next, the, the, they're not, hey, my, they're not my favorite Aang moments, but the next episode is probably, possibly, I'm not sure if it is or not, but it's one of my least favorite episodes. I can't remember off the top of my head what it was. I just remember when I went through the whole disc, um, I really only enjoyed one episode, like truly enjoyed one episode on it. So 
you're right not not great but that's all right we'll get them in before christmas even if we have to cheat and stuff them in together but we'll make it work uh anyway thank you very much for coming by chris thanks for calling over we will talk to you all next time